the shaping of, of policies. And therefore, we are very happy that we have two representatives of the European Commission today with us, that are Patricia Piton and Thomas Weber. Uh, first, I will introduce Patricia Piton, who is working at the Organics Unit in DG Agriculture, so Director General for Agriculture and Rural Development. Please, Patricia, the floor is yours. Thank you, Bram. Thank you, uh, LiveSeed, uh, for uh, this invitation and for all the work that has been done already in these years. And uh, I am also um, looking forward to read the, the future reports that Monica has announced uh, this morning. I would say, first of all, uh, that indeed the organic breeding uh, is, uh, um, is being recognized as an important measure for the, to contribute uh, to a more sustainable agriculture and uh, to uh, the protection of uh, biodiversity. With the Green Deal, the Commission expressed uh, her commitment, uh, comprehensive commitment to tackling the climate and the environmental issues and underlines as well the importance of the common agriculture policy to move uh, to a more sustainable production system. In both the strategies on biodiversity and as well on the farm to fork, organic farming is recognized as an important sustainable practice and one of the relevant measures able to contribute to sustainable development, to efficient management of the natural resources, to protect biodiversity and ecosystem. And also both strategies openly refer to action that are needed to facilitate the registration of organic seed varieties. The strategy set uh, the ambitious target for organic uh, to 25% of organic agricultural land to be achieved in Europe by 2030. And uh, organic farming should uh, therefore obviously accelerate its development, but in the same time, we have to ensure that it continues to remain the model for to reach a higher level of sustainable food production. So in addition, we have also to keep in mind that we start from a situation that varies usually and between the member states, where we have an average in Europe around 8% of the organic agricultural land now, but we go from the 24.7% of Austria to the 2.4% of Ireland. So to support such development, several actions are needed. As in the past, we have seen the agroenvironmental measure schemes were very successful in boosting organic. And now with the proposed new uh, agricultural policy, there will also be other potential tools for member states to, to promote agriculture. In, in their territories. COM is closely supporting the negotiation ongoing between the Parliament and the Council with a dedicated task force for this, indeed to achieve uh, the most ambitious, we hope, outcomes. In addition, Commission plan to provide recommendation to Member States also in advance of the completion of their strategic plans to support them in, in identifying higher sustainable targets in line with the objectives of the new CAP, taking into account as well the targets that are identified in the Green Deal strategy. So Commission is also working on the, you know, on a new action plan on organic for the period 2021-2026, and this publication is expected in the first uh, semester of 2021. The plan will identify the relevant action to progress and to uh, as well support the member state in boosting the sector. And the public consultation is still ongoing, uh, but almost uh, uh, finalized until this Friday. And we have received several hundreds of uh, contributions demonstrating again that there is a strong interest for the sector in Europe. And I take the opportunity to solicit and call you to give your contribution if not already done. I cannot anticipate now which precise action will be in the plan as we are in a consultation phase. But as already expressed in other commission communication, I can say that the plan will surely uh, address the two aspects to tackle both the supply and the demand. Production and consumption must grow together because we have to keep a solid balance to avoid the risk of depletion of the organic part. We will have to work together to ensure that the expansion of the sector is achieved in full compliance with the organic principles and the standards which are ruled also in the new organic uh, legislation. And uh, this is also to 
ensure that we address the citizens' expectation because we see there is an increased awareness of the use organic logo confirmed also recently by the Eurobarometer special report. Now we are in around 56% of the survey was indeed uh, recognizing the knowledge about the logo. But uh, how the farm to fork strategies, the biodiversity strategies can contribute to increase the organic seed production and plant breeding. So we will have an update on the temporary experiment and the work ongoing from Thomas later. But I would say that already clear that the strategies pointing to these uh, important ambitious objectives are, as themselves are, important levers on the basis of which the member state could identify the right measure, more adapt, more suitable to their national reality, agricultural and environmental reality. And uh, such expansion of the sector should obviously then result in a higher demand for or conversion and organic plant reproductive material to be addressed by the organic breeders. And from the live seed survey on seed suppliers, last year I think was, we have read that about the increase in organic seed demand. Already in these past years, there is a willingness to invest in organic from the 56% of the seed suppliers that were involved in the survey. So I think these set targets for organic should further support the progress in this sector. The new organic regulation introduces also specific objectives for the organic breeding sector, as you well know, and we have discussed already this morning as well, and the, the new provision. And I will give you a brief update on where we are with the secondary legislation necessary for its full implementation. First of all, as you know, due also to the difficult uh, situation due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the application of the regulation has been postponed of one year. So now the full application will be 1st January 2022. And this will allow all stakeholders to prepare for the implementation, taking into account the secondary legislation on production rules, on control, on trade, that we indeed we are going to complete this by the first quarter of 2021 which will be the impact of such postponement for the plant reproductive material sector. Mainly all stakeholders will have more time, one year more, it's the, indeed the to, to be ready with the new tools for the proper implementation. And among these tools, we need the national database and system in place to be able then to exchange and inform on the availability of the material. Related deadlines also included in the regulation are all moved of one year. This means, for example, that the derogation system scheme will uh, be there until uh, 2036. But as well, there will be a report from the Commission to the Parliament and Council interim. And this one will be by 2026. So we're quite close. And with respect to the temporary experiment plan to be ready six months from the enter into application of the regulation, we will see with Thomas, we will be update on, you, on this later. Where we are with the secondary legislation concerning plant reproductive material, up to now, on the basis of the empowering given to commission under the Basic Act, we have worked on several proposals. And out, out of these several proposals, four are really particularly addressing the uh, sector of plant reproductive material and aim to create a more clear, hopefully, coherent, harmonized legislative frame to facilitate the progress in this area. I will present three, uh, very briefly, three of these uh, acts, and Thomas will update you on the fourth one on organic heterogeneous material. First act, uh, that is a delegated act on derogation on the basis of the empowerment under Article 12. It's an act that is ruling, amending on the use of in conversion and non-organic plant reproductive material. And the, the Act is currently under examination of Parliament and Council. And if there are no objections, the Act will be uh, applicable from January 2022, as together with the Basic Act. And this is publicly available. Like you can see it in the European web gate on delegated regulation. The main provision, which are therein included, and I would say, these are indeed uh, also reflecting the work done in these years by LiveSeed, 
has been taken into account in uh, drafting this proposal in discussing with the member state uh, and also live seed experts have been invited in the committee legislative committee to give us a presentation on the database and the router so in this provision that are really for this uh, first delegated act focus on the derogation we have again the principle that uh, the organic uh, material must be used as priority by the farmers, obviously. But we took into account the reality, and we have seen with the presentation from LiveSeed that we are still far to have a complete uh, fulfillment of the availability of this type of material. We are working, we are in a very, very challenging phase in this sense, because we are really moving from a, a situation, moving to a complete new, uh, complete, no, no, luckily, because a lot has been already done, but with the technique of breeding that need also to be put, uh, to be really um, more uh, developed. So we have now, with respect to the derogation, a situation where we need still to derogate. And uh, uh, first, uh, we uh, have to, first of all, um, keep the principle. The farmers have to consult the database or the system put in place by the member state to verify the availability in terms of organic and in conversion material. But there is a new approach because in the past, the availability and the system were required to cover all the seeds. Now, indeed, they require, it's the, the requirement is for all. The old type of plant reproductive material used for the different crops cultivated in organic farming have to be taken into account. So the availability should cover all crops and not only the organic availability, but as well the in-conversion availability. There is no, uh, in this uh, delegated act proposal, there will be no need to get the derogation for the use of in-conversion. It's enough the uh, analysis of the availability in the database in the system, but then the operators can require an individual uh, derogation for specific varieties that they need, and it's not yet uh, covered by the availability. And uh, I would like to underline also that uh, the conversion now under Article 10 of the new regulation of the regulation 848, the conversion material can be labeled. In the past, it was not the case. Now, the conversion material can be labeled. Therefore, it could be interesting for the seed breeders and can be labeled after 12 months of respect of the condition of production under the organic rules, under the organic standards. So this, in a sense, is accelerating the possible placing on the market of this conversion material. The derogation for non-organic... I'm oh, sorry. I should... There is something wrong with the record. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hi, yes, we can hear you. It's all fine. You can keep going. Can I, can I continue? Yes. Can I continue? Yes, you can continue. Yeah. Okay. okay. So going back to the, on the derogation issue, um, I was indeed uh, stressing the new elements that are now uh, in, introduced in this uh, delegated act. And as well, we in the delegated act, member, member states will have to. Um, it's a bit the record is coming. Yeah. There is an overlapping. Eh? Okay. okay, there is an overlapping of the records, I think. However, I, I continue. It continues. Eh? I have a problem with the yeah. Um, um, you have another window open with uh, an app that you can close. Okay. May I? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you keep only the stream yard. Um, window open and you can close the spot me platform only and then you will not have the overlap 
you can enter the spot me afterwards if your session is over. You can continue, Patricia. I can continue, huh? Yes. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, uh, sorry for this. Then, if I, what I was um, underlining the elements which are new in this delegated act, we have, uh, in fact, introduced also an obligation for the member state to identify, uh, it's really a requirement, to identify the positive list of species, and that was also a recommendation from LIFESID, to indeed have the list of species, of subspecies, varieties, which are indeed sufficiently available on the market in Europe in, in terms of organic or uh, in conversion material, and to uh, have this uh, list available public uh, on their, uh, their database and their system, but as well, the Commission will take into account um, take care to make all this information available on the European web. Then as well, we had to uh, keep the possibility for the member state to issue derogation in case of complete uh, unavailability of material. And there, there is a, still a possibility for a general derogation, but is uh, li uh, limited in terms of condition therein uh, included, and as well in terms of justification and the report. Therefore, there will be a strict uh, monitoring of uh, the uh, applicability, application, final application of uh, uh, this derogation. The second act, the second act is uh, the implementing act uh, regulation that is already being um, adopted and published, where uh, we have introduced some more details with respect to the information that the member state will have to make uh, public and uh, report to the commission, and the commission will make public in terms, of, again, of availability of material and in terms of derogation issued. And uh, these two acts, uh, I think that are really addressing more, not all, but several of the recommendations that we have from a report from LIFE in, in the, of the past year. Then uh, we believe that also that it's fundamental to continue to work in the respect of the increase of transparency and harmonization among member states. And this was also underlined in the June workshop, where indeed there, uh, there is a need as well of, in terms of certainty of the system uh, in place for the seed breeders and for the farmers in terms also of the level playing field with respect to the um, issuing of this type of derogation. And finally, we have as well the third act that which can be of interest that is indeed currently uh, in examination by Parliament and Council, an act in which the Commission has proposed to address uh, a demand for the possibility to label the mixture of fodder plant seeds. And this is done in, in a complete coherence, compliance with the uh, rules of the fodder plant directive 66401. But there indeed uh, the act would allow the seed um, breeders, uh, seed producer to label mixture of fodder plant and not only fodder plant, but given the importance of this type of mixture for as well for practice like the, the cover crop, the green manure, the flowering strips, to label this type of uh, mixture when there uh, are indeed uh, unluckily still need to be made up with some uh, components not uh, organic. Some components not organic, which have to be, in any case, uh, subject to derogation under the control of the member state authority. And therefore, uh, this uh, act will imply the, the fact that on the label will appear not only the exact percentage in terms of weight, in terms of um, weight of the different component, organic in conversion and non-organic, but as well a reference to the derogation uh, ish regime uh, that allow this uh, mixture to be on the market. Therefore, we believe that uh, this provision should help uh, because it should help the, on the side of the producer to promote their products, uh, the use of this type of mixture and uh, the uh, farmers to have uh, the complete picture of what and the information of what is, is inside the mixture themselves. So, 
I would now I would move because I see the time is running, and I would uh, now just to quickly say that we are working. The next step for us are the completion of the organic uh, uh, action plan, the, but the completion of the secondary legislation as well is fundamental, not only to complete but as well to follow up the correct implementation of this uh, secondary legislation. And we will continue to work on guidance and transparency because uh, there is a much as I underlined also a much, much needed to have uh, more information on the sector to be able to monitor the progress because we hope that we will um, at least uh, approach the 100% organic uh, plant reproductive material availability. And uh, as well, we are working on the platform, in, uh, internal platform, to, rec to collect the information from the member state. And uh, uh, for this platform, we will have to work with the life seed decor because we have to um, find a way to have the best, the most efficient way to transfer this information. And, and the work done with the EU router database will also, for us, important to, to explore further, to explore with the, in terms of technical, technicalities and as well in terms of needs from the member state and possibility for us to propose to, to move forward for a more harmonized uh, approach to, to, the, to all this uh, matter. So I, I will conclude now and uh, thank you for your attention. Sorry for the inconvenient uh, technicalities. And uh, I leave it uh, to Thomas, I think, to Baran and Thomas. Thanks a lot, Patricia, for your intervention and for this overview of the organic regulation and the very different secondary uh, acts it's a very complex um, issue but we are very happy that you've considered in the delegated and um, um yeah, in the second different secondary acts um the uh input in, input recommendations from life seed as well and we hope that we together can uh, work for 100 percent use of uh, organic seeds um we go now to Thomas, Thomas Weber, who is working at the Plant Health Unit of uh, the Direct General for Health and Food Safety. Please, Thomas, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, Pram, and uh, thank you very much uh, to the organizers for inviting uh, me and Patricia, of course, again, and uh, to give us an opportunity to present uh, our points. Um, Patricia, in general, she uh, offered already a very the broad picture uh, in which both uh, DG Agri and here in DG Sante, we are um, carrying out our work on, on these issues. So I, I will not uh, repeat that. I will uh, focus uh, really on on the seed, uh, seed issues uh, uh, in, in all the developments in the seed area. And uh, both the Green Deal, Biodiversity Strategy, Farm to Fork Strategy acknowledge, uh, at least uh, explicitly, but in, uh, of course, very succinctly, uh, the seed uh, varieties, uh, registration procedures can make uh, to the achievement of the objectives of these, uh, of these strategies. So currently, I think uh, there are three uh, very important uh, developments I uh, want to present to you in, in the area of, of seeds and varieties. So uh, first of all, uh, of course, the organic heterogeneous uh, material, which uh, we have been working on for nearly two years now. Uh, this has been addressed uh, in several respects already in the in the morning in in some uh, of the sessions. The draft currently is uh, in the public feedback uh, process, so I would encourage uh, anyone, any of you, if they have any comments, uh, the process, the feedback process is open until uh, end of. Uh, yeah, this Friday, 27th of November. So um, please uh, take the opportunity and uh, comment on the draft uh, as uh, as much uh, yeah as many of you as possible. Uh, we are thankful for for all input. So this uh, this draft, of course, it takes a bit uh, broader approach, both in the 
scope, so which species are uh, uh, covered, and in uh, what type of, of material is covered, then uh, the uh, temporary experiment uh, on um, what was so at the time called uh, populations, uh, which only covered uh, cereals and uh, I think was mostly uh, targeting composite cross populations. So we have taken a, a broader a broader view on, on this material now to also include, let's say, material which uh, historically through the cultivation practices on farm management practices has uh, uh, Yes, retained uh, really a large uh, genetic uh, diversity. Secondly, uh, yes, there's the temporary experiment, uh, which uh, was a uh, focus of one of the uh, working groups this morning. So there are several aspects uh, related to that. And I think I can probably preempt uh, already some some questions which will might come up uh, later. Uh, so first of all, I would like to address the question of the of the timing of the experiment. So Patricia explained that uh, the organic application application has been postponed by one year, so it will be applied from the first of uh, January twenty twenty two. During the negotiations on the organic regulation, the commission made a commitment to carry out such a temporary experiment on organic varieties starting no later than six months after the application of the uh, organic regulation. So this means that the experiments should start no later than the 1st of July 2022. Of course, the initial date was 1st of uh, July next year, 21. Um, it means, well, the statement says no later than, which means we are flexible in uh, when to start the experiment. Of course, we have recognized that uh, 1st of July is not uh, necessarily a very good date to start, uh, let's say, uh, any experiment on variety testing. Uh, this is too late to, uh, in the year, in the season, growing season, to start any new trials. So uh, we definitely will not wait until uh, 1st of uh, July 2022. But uh, we have already consulted with, uh, with stakeholders and we will have uh, another consultation with the member states. We would envisage uh, a starting date uh, either 1st of January 22 or it could be 1st of December 21 so that uh, also the uh, applications for testing and so on with the, uh, the with the testing stations, with the competent authorities can be made, that uh, at least the full season of uh, 22 can be can be used. If we if we would start earlier, uh, if we had started on the 1st of July uh, 21, or if we would start on the 1st of July 21, uh, we would basically uh, not be able to use at least the first half year of the temporary experiment and in that respect not make uh, optimal use of, of the time. So I think this, uh, my impression was that stakeholder in general accept that we uh, continue with the uh, preparations uh, of the experiment. Uh, we, uh, we should uh, soon start thinking about the, uh, well, the, this uh, composition of the working groups. Uh, it was mentioned in the, well, I think that was in our first communication to stakeholders that we uh, think initially planned to keep these working groups relatively compact and small to make it manageable, but there has been a really considerable interest from member states and many stakeholder uh, groups to participate. So I think we have to be more generous in the number of participants and also, of course, to have uh, 
diversity of, of input uh, in, in this process. Uh, of course, this uh, the focus of these working groups uh, where stakeholders and competent authorities, commission and also uh, CP in a supporting role, CPDO, will come together is uh, to focused on the protocols, in particular the DOS protocols and uh, yes, also the VCU protocols. In many other, of course, aspects, uh, we will also have to settle on, on labeling and so on. That's, let's say, the primary actors in that respect, of course, will be the Commission and the Member States because it's part of the of the actual legal framework of the legal act establishing the the experiment but uh, but of course uh, we will uh, always consult with with stakeholders we want to make the let's say have the uh, want to make the temporary experiment as useful as possible to 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 give us information on how to let's say the, develop the system further for uh, permanent rules later on so this uh, we have, uh, let's say now with the temper experiment, maybe a little bit more more time, but also we have a lot of work to do. The most uh, urgent thing is to work on these uh, protocols, and uh, that at least uh, that when the experiment starts, uh, hopefully varieties are already uh, on the starting line and can <coughs> part of uh, can. Uh, become can enter the uh, variety testing uh, uh, system in uh, well several I think in that respect there were some questions uh, coming up already the issue of uh, plant variety rights uh, and this material I think it's fairly clear that uh, if a variety is registered using a adjusted, protocol and not a protocol either UPOF or CPVO, there will be no uh, possibility for uh, granting a plant variety right to such a such a variety. Um, yes, uh, that's uh, I think that's that's the main point. I'm, I'm happy of course to uh, to to take uh, questions uh, later. I think the, the third uh, uh, point I need to address is <coughs> goes, uh, goes a bit further. As some of you might be aware, uh, the commission was requested by council, that was last year, November, to uh, do a study on the options to update the seed marketing legislation. Uh, we are currently working on that. We have uh, the help of a contractor uh, doing desk research and consultations and surveys uh, uh, for uh, in order to collect uh, data for this study. Initially, the deadline for this study was uh, 30, the end of this year, 31st of December, but uh, given uh, delays in uh, COVID-related delays in, uh, yes, uh, uh, especially with uh, finding the contractor and uh, so everybody it was exactly uh, the process was started when uh, the lockdown started, so everybody had to adjust and <clears throat> there was basically several months of delay. So we are committed to present this study to Council in April next year. So this, this study addresses some, some crucial, crucial questions which uh, I think uh, emerged from the failed attempt to uh, to revise the seed marketing legislation uh, uh, in 2013 and uh, it will 
let's say, take uh, these experiences and, uh, let's say, these inputs we uh, received uh, from that time on in, uh, in, into account. And when uh, establishing the options we, we have uh, in, uh, in updating the legislation, of course, we also have to take into account that uh, new policy uh, objectives are have been formulated, especially in the Green Deal and uh, Farm to Fork strategy and so on, where uh, diversity is uh, recognized uh, as, as, as being very important for diversity at all kinds of levels uh, to uh, in order to create a sustainable food system. So this is a political objective, which we uh, will, of course, uh, take uh, very uh, centrally into account when uh, when uh, establishing these these uh, policy options, uh, we have to take into account that uh, I think what has become clear that there are a much more diverse set of actors uh, in the sector. That uh, process, uh, things like uh, participatory breeding become uh, more important. Uh, that there's a Yes, diversification of, of demands from, from final consumers. And we also have to take into account international uh, developments, uh, especially in plant genetic resources, like in the International Treaty for Plant Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture, to, to align uh, maybe the, the certain parts of the seed legislation with these uh, more strongly with the international developments. So this uh, this study starts, uh, I think, uh, well, of course, a long-term process, which will keep us busy for a few years. This, uh, I think it's safe to say, uh, we intend to, to revise the legislation, but it will be a, a targeted legislation of the existing dis, uh, directives. Uh, then this study, which establishes the options, would be followed by uh, an impact assessment, a full impact assessment, where, of course, again, there are quite considerable public consultation uh, processes involved, and uh, which would then, of course, be followed by a proposal to be adopted by Parliament and, and Council. So uh, this... I imagine it takes us uh, uh, will take several years, of course. Uh, hopefully, within the mandate of the current uh, commission, and uh, we, of course, will be, of course, very, very uh, keen to uh, uh, involve uh, stakeholders at all stages of the process uh, to uh, to get as much input uh, input as as possible. So. This is, uh, I think, I'm a little bit approximately in time early. I think it's uh, we should take as much time as possible to to answer answer questions. Thank you very Hi. much for the time and thanks and a lot, uh, Thomas uh, Weber, for your update on the varieties and variety testing on the organic regulation, and also for your update on the revision of the seed marketing <laughs> legislation. I invite you to stay uh, on screen in the panel, the virtual panel, and also I invite um, Patricia and Monica to come on screen so that we can uh, answer from uh, questions from the participants. So uh, everybody is very much invited to post your um, questions to the SpotMe platform so that we can um, ask these questions to the panelists. There is already one uh, question. Mm -hmm. That's um, a question for Thomas, I think. It's uh, whether you foresee an extension of the first temporary experiment, the temporary experiment on the marketing of cereal populations and seeds that is will ex uh, expire until yes. 2021. Yes, we, we recognize that there might be a, um, well, given the postponement of the application mm -hmm. of the uh, organic uh, regulation, meaning also that the delegated act on organic heterogeneous material would be will be become applicable uh, one year later, first of January 22. There's indeed uh, a gap. Uh, the currently the 
heterogeneous material can only be marketed uh, under this temporary experiment, which will finish by end of February. And, and unfortunately, it's not possible to, to prolong that experiment. It has run the full seven years, which uh, is the maximum duration of uh, of temporary experiments. So we are aware of this problem. I cannot give a clear answer right now. We we will uh, we will discuss that uh, internally and uh, legally. We have uh, tomorrow uh, a last meeting with the uh, participating member states in this experiment. So I think we will also do, discuss this question in, in that context. I hope we, we can find some form of uh, arrangement to to bridge to bridge this gap. <clears throat> Thanks a lot, Thomas. Um, then a question for Patricia, uh, a comment from uh, one of the participants that who says that a big number of delegated and implementing acts is confusing for them. And if there is an easy overview of all the acts that have been adopted and still to come, in particular then regarding the in-conversion material. Yeah. May I speak? Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, it's indeed, uh, we, we believe that it will be necessary to, to, to do something, to, to have an overview in future. But uh, currently, it's, what, uh, I would suggest, in fact, you can, it's, um, it's easy to find via the web gate of the Europe, it's easy to find the Delegated Act for that reason. And then in future, you have to take into account that the Delegated Act amending will, in any case, be uh, in, in, uh, include in the basic act via the consolidated version of the basic act itself. So in future will be easier. Now in this phase, I, it's true that it's more complicated because as all still in the process, in the legislative process, and therefore, uh, for example, this act is uh, currently in, under the examination of Parliament and Council, but as soon as it is then published, will be published in the official journal and will also be then incorporated in the basic act because it's an amending act. Therefore, there will be, we will also in any case uh, find also a way to put on our web page, we will uh, update on the organic web page, we will update. Therefore, uh, this could also be a way to facilitate the, 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 the divulgation of this, uh, of this new uh, act. We we'll take this into account. Okay. Thanks a lot. Uh, I have uh, one more question for you, uh, Patricia. Um, the new definition of organic varieties says, says that uh, this variety should be defined by a high degree of genetic diversity or phenotypic diversity, but some um, also some varieties used in organic farming are more uniform. Uh, so how um, can these varieties fit within a new definition? <laughs> So it's clear that the um, current uh, leg legislative and, te and technical, because in the reality, it's clear that we have now different path. We have uh, uh, material that uh, is uh, conventional, that can be used in the production of uh, in conversion and organic seeds, organic plant reproductive material. Yes, can, can be, can start, they start from conventional, can start from a quite pure variety. But then what the legislation requires for this type of material? They require that it has to pass through the um, conversion period and as well of certain particular uh, requirements in terms of mother plant in terms of parent plant, in the case of cuttings and so on, rootstock and so on, where indeed the material conventional has, as a minimum, to be three years under the organic production rules. And this is in the annex of the basic regulation. Because for annual, there are provisions laid down in a way that means that only at the third year, the, the seed can be put on the market as organic. Therefore, I would, uh, in this sense, I would recommend, and we will uh, try as well in future, because we are working on interpretation issues, we, we will try in future to make this more also more, more uh, public in this sense. Uh, really to find, probably we need also some sort of guidance in future on this, because it's clear that the regulation requires this. 
You start from a conventional, but to be able to put on the market seeds as organic, a minimum is three years, and for a perennial as well, because there the cycle is, is uh, defined as a cycle that should cover at least two growing seasons for a parent plant. But then you have to consider also the conversion of the parcel. Therefore, indeed, the finally, we have uh, um, indeed uh, these minimum requirements of uh, years under the organic production requirements for. This, so this has to be further clarified, I think, because sometimes I, I, I think that there is still some uh, um, misunderstanding in this sense. For the derogation, okay, the derogation is another, the derogation is a derogation for use. And therefore, if the farmer need the variety, because really there is no availability of conversion material or organic material, the farmer can still use a conventional one, but this is a good, it's a link to the uh, necessity to start, for example, a new a new crop. I can imagine a new crop, completely new species that is not yet been. Therefore, there is a need to start from a conventional. Otherwise, there should be indeed the possibility to have uh, from the seed producer at least a conversion material after one year, and then the production of organic coming from conventional in this sense, at least a minimum adapted to the the lower input, uh, lower, different, uh, really completely different uh, cultivation system of organic. And then we have the organic varieties. That is what is in fact currently uh, under development, already started, but then we will have obviously in future to, to think about this different uh, material that are already on the market and we will have to work in this sense. But I think already the, the basic act allow to to have also in terms of labeling a uh, better definition in this yeah. sense. Thanks a lot, uh, Patricia. Monica, I see that you're uh, taking a lot of notes. If you want to intervene, if you want to comment on what has been said, you can do so. Yeah, I just wanted to, to add to the organic varieties. We had this discussion that for us it's quite important that the selection and uh, the whole purpose why we do organic breeding, that it's adapted to organic agriculture that this uh, need to be uh, quite a longer number of years to do that. And there might be, in, we have been discussing about five to eight years. Uh, uh, so I think that's still under discussion there. We also got input from our workshop today, but for us, that's, that's quite an important question. And for us, the three years for conversion would not be sufficient as it's, as this is more related to the seed, but not in the development of the cultivar. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks, Monica. Um, Patricia, you mentioned that uh, you, the Commission will issue a report in 2026 on the supply and demand of organic seeds. And the question is how the member states and the stakeholders will be involved in the preparation of this report. Uh, yeah. uh, sure. Sure, we, we will have not only to work with the evidence provided by the report of the member state, by the database, but we will, uh, this will be obviously supported by a, a comprehensive uh, study and the, the way that this is done as, uh, as indeed uh, still to be to be defined in detail but uh, there will be absolutely uh, an involvement of uh, the, the stakeholders of all the, the all the all the chain of uh, of, uh, of uh, potential production indeed Thanks a lot, maybe, Patricia. Yes, Monica? Maybe I would like to add there, because we have now quite experiences, especially Francesco, on this how to collect the data. I think one thing that would help a lot about to see the production of organic seed is if the seed uh, certification associations, if they would, uh, when they certify the seed, they could just make a, a link if it's organic or non-organic seed because this is at the moment only done in Germany and Austria, but it, would be, it wouldn't be a lot of effort, but it would give a lot of more security of the data of organic seed. Thanks, uh, Monica. Then there's a question for Thomas about the definition of organic heterogeneous mm -hmm. material, uh, where the uh, comment is that uh, timeline, the definition of a timeline for development has been taken out, which is not very helpful. Can you comment on that, Thomas? Uh, yes, uh, yes. I think we we have to make the distinction between uh, what the 
organic regulation, the basic act, how, the, how this regulation defines organic heterogeneous material and how it defines organic varieties. And uh, so for, for organic uh, heterogeneous material, uh, for the propagating material to uh, to be to qualify as organic, uh, just the, the normal rules of uh, one year. Uh, so the previous uh, generation has to be cultivated organic applies. If we if we had included what was an initial draft, uh, uh, this uh, uh, specific requirements on how many years uh, to uh, the material needs to be uh, cultivated under organic conditions. We would have, uh, uh, let's say, really uh, when would have gone beyond. Uh, so the commission would have uh, gone beyond uh, what uh, what we are allowed to do by the empowerment in in this uh, organic regulation. We would have, uh, let's say, really. Uh, not supplemented. We would have uh, would have we would have made additional requirements we which we legally are not uh, allowed to do in in this act. So uh, so this is uh, this is uh, mostly a, a legal, not a not a technical a technical issue. The empowerment in the organic regulation does not allow us to. Uh, to to uh, use to include such such a specific requirement okay but then it results that there are different requirements for organic heterogeneous material and organic varieties suitable for organic production and so can't this be misleading um Yes, I uh, well, I think it is as uh, <laughs> I think this this po possibility for let's say maybe a bit of confusion is already existing as you have let's say organic seeds which uh, comply with a standard let's say requirement of that uh, uh, just the, the mother plant of the seed has to be uh, so one generation previous or two generation previous in case of. Uh, Perennial plants have to be uh, uh, grown under organic conditions. Um, yes, the of course the term organic varieties is, is a new one. It uh, mm -hmm. it really let's say they includes the entire uh, breeding process uh, in that definition. So it is uh, it is as it is, <laughs> and uh, it uh, yes it requires some some attention from 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 the users that's uh, that that is true okay patricia do you want to comment on that uh, it's a uh, i think uh, i i can't now anticipate uh, but i think that uh, it's uh, it's uh, that we will have to deepen this because we have to to take care of what then is then finally labeled in terms of uh, product so and uh, and plant reproductive material is in the scope of the organic legislation, is fully in the scope of the organic legislation. The, the breeders, the producer of seed have to be certified, will have to be. Therefore, they are already subject to all the principles, to all the, also the uh, requirements linked to the traceability of the product themselves. So I think we are in this sense uh, sure of the possible verification of the where the material comes from eh? but also we have to ensure that the, on the level also the user the farmers are then duly informed and so that is uh, to be yeah and also in terms of coherence with the horizontal rules as well absolutely Thanks a lot. Um, I see there are no more questions. So if uh, participants still have questions, please do post them uh, in the chat. Um, Monica, do you want to comment on what Thomas and Patricia said? Uh, yes, I was just wondering um, how it is uh, will be like when we talk about uh, breeding for organic, uh, as this was also a topic, or doing partly uh, selection under organic conditions for uh, different numbers of years we are still under discussion in live seed uh, then uh, would this mean for the from the regulation that this has to be uh, certified according to the, the organic land has to be certified according to the organic uh, regulation 
who wants to answer that? Yeah. Thomas? Um, I think, uh, <laughs> well, I'm not entirely sure I completely understood the question. So with, uh, maybe I can, uh, I can, I can yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can, I can add, I can add, it would be, because the certification is a certification of the product to be sold to the final uh, user, to the final consumer, or the final user is the farmer, in the case of production of seed and the reproductive material. Therefore, it's that, in the sense that there is a requirement for a certification when the, the product then is put on the market for the final user. And that is... Mm. Like the regulation, mm -hmm. can't be there can't be a label on the product organic if it's not certified in conversion, if it's not certified and it's not con fulfilling the requirements of the of the regulations so in terms of mm -hmm. labeling and, and uh, yeah and marketing. Mm -hmm. fine. Um, I have one more question about participation in the temporary experiment on organic varieties. There are many small scale breeders that wouldn't have the financial means to participate in it. And also registration offices have limited financial capacity. So is there any possibility for common financing at the EU level to take part in the temporary experiment? Um, well, I think uh, from, uh, from the DG Santos side, I think I can not uh, let's say promise uh, or announce any uh, any financial uh, support uh, implementation of these uh, temporary experiment is on the member states level and uh, let's say so far in the in the preparation the uh, interest of the member states is uh, is is quite uh, well it's quite impressive so most member states are interested in taking part but uh, because the member states will have to, if they participate and uh, varieties uh, will enter the testing regime, they will have to implement it. And uh, so at least from the side of the competent authorities, they will have to think about how to finance their participation in, the, uh, in this project. It will be easier for some member states than, than for others. That uh, that is is clear. Uh, for the uh, for the users, so for the breeders, that's a, that's of course a different question. So we can of course can see uh, member states can also see if they can how they can support uh, breeders uh, or what uh, fees to charge for for these uh, for these experiments. Uh, we, we, we will have to see. But I think uh, Patricia can also con, uh, contribute a little bit uh, to that. Uh, my, in, I think uh, it's not that my, my um, domain, I would say, but, but from what also I see with the respect to the possible measure that are already now uh, supported under the rural developmental uh, program indeed uh, also uh, discussing informally with colleagues there are there are measures which are covering at least uh, uh, supporting a percentage of contribution for a member state whenever they put in place systems to uh, really to in terms of technical assistance in terms of in fact developing uh, some input that are necessary to achieve the objective of the common policy therefore there, is, there are possibility uh, if the member state uh, retain uh, that uh, a certain type of measure could could indeed be then uh, um, used as a tool for this uh, for this temporary experiment. I don't, I'm, from an informal already exchange, we don't see a problem in, in this sense. As in the past, has never happened that the member state uh, were indeed uh, requiring a support, that is support for the temporary experiment. But in case uh, uh, there would be a possibility under the, the, the current, uh, all, all, even now under the current tools. Okay. Uh, Monica, if you take a bit uh, a broader picture, not just focusing on the temporary experiment, but in general uh, financing of organic breeding, you've been working also on that within LiveSeed and within other projects. And what financing strategies uh, 
can you propose to support organic mm -hmm. plant breeding? Yeah, so we have been uh, looking at uh, the financing issue as we have seen that uh, with the approach that we're going, that we want to have many different cultivars and many different crops, it will not be possible that via the seed sale or via the royalties we will can cover the cost of the breeding. So that's why we were looking for different uh, uh, financing strategies. There's also some strategy to have like a kind of a... Um, a fee for the like a fee for cultivar development that's mainly paid at the moment by farmers. There are some individual projects where the, um, some retailers offer some product derived from organic cultivars uh, where they uh, ask a, speci a specific issue on it. And um, at the moment we we see actually uh, free pillars to to finance organic plant breeding. I think, uh, first of all, uh, we would like to engage also the value chain that they see the, and take some responsibility that uh, if they want to have the integrity of their products and keeping out certain breeding uh, techniques out of the organic sector, uh, that they need to invest in organic breeding. But we also see that especially for neglected crops, uh, it's also... Uh, kind of a responsibility, I think, of the European Commission to invest in that because that will, that the present breeding system has neglected the smaller crops because it, it doesn't make the return of investment. And I think that it's important that we broaden the, the number of crops and that we also introduce maybe new crops in the scope of climate change. And uh, also to say that the third pillar uh, probably also will remain, uh, that is on uh, private foundations uh, that uh, provide money for organic plant breeding. But at the moment, this, uh, to our knowledge, this is mainly in the German-speaking part. There are not so many foundations yet in other countries. And uh, what we see also a bit the problem is that um, that we still have in, in Eastern and Southern European countries, then the number of initiatives, it's much smaller that working on organic breeding. And therefore, we, we also think it's important to have some, some support from the Commission that these countries also uh, can participate in this uh, temporary experiment to get exposed and see what is the potential of organic breeding and uh, also to invest more in organic seed so that they develop local seed systems, not importing the organic seed from outside. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Monica. Mm -hmm. I think then we have come to the end of our um, session. It's uh, two o'clock. So um, thanks a lot for your participation, Monica. Thomas, Patricia, um, and also thanks a lot uh, for all the participants that uh, have uh, participated and listened to us in all parts of Europe or even in other parts of the world. Uh, I'm glad that uh, this first um, first day of Organic Innovation Days went rather smoothly. Uh, we have also a very high number of participants, almost 190, so that's really a success already. <laughs> um, before uh, we really close, I have the pleasure to announce um, a prize. If uh, this screen, this slide can be shown on the screen. So um, we have uh, with LiveSeed done a photo competition, a picture competition uh, to raise awareness on the beauty and the benefits of an organic plant breeding. Um, everybody was invited to share nice pictures showing the diversity of uh, organic cultivars. And we have uh, three winners of this. The first one is the Umke Institute, the Research Institute for Organic Farming in Hungary. The second one is uh, Antje Curling from uh, Demeter, the Biodynamic Association in Germany. And the third one, uh, Nautilus Organic. Uh, all of these three um, organizations or persons uh, will receive from LiSeed an organic seed advent calendar um, of uh, produced by Biosat Goods. So uh, we are almost at Christmas, uh, first Sunday, Advent Sunday is uh, next Sunday. So you can use this calendar to uh, count down to Christmas. I hope uh, you will make use of it and also make use of the seeds that are in this uh, calendar, of course. Mm. Um, 
then um, to all the participants, I hope that you have gained a better insight in the LiveSeed project uh, today and, and the huge variety of outcomes produced by the project. We are in very interesting times for the organic sector and for organic seed. The Commission has announced a 25% organic farmland target as part of the farm to fork strategy. And as a result of that, we'll also come up with an organic action plan, as Patricia explained. We are um, expecting or we are expecting the start of a new organic regulation with organic of with the introduction of new content concepts like organic heterogeneous material and also the temporary experiment on organic varieties with live seed that we can contribute to shape these policies there is also an increased commitment of the sector and of policymakers to phase out the use of non-organic seed or non-organic reproductive material and this is also partly due to the work of live seed and this work will be the subject of the, the parallel session tomorrow in uh, what we call the European workshop. Tomorrow there is also um, another event, a TP Organics event, that will discuss the opportunities for organics in Horizon Europe with the interventions of policymakers on organic farming, civil society, and also a very interesting keynote speech of Emile Frisson, who is an expert at IPES Food and a mission board member of the Soil Health and Food. So I'm looking forward to meeting you all of you to, tomorrow again at 10 o'clock with the possibility to get uh, connected at 9.30. And uh, I wish you, in the meantime, a very nice day.